season finale of America. Uh, <laughs> I'm Jimmy Fallon, in for Greg Gutfeld. We're not sure what the king of late night is up to, but the way things are going in this country, he may have just gotten a job modeling women's yoga pants, for all we know. <laughs> yeah, in another time, a biological man like Greg couldn't have been hired to model women's clothes, but he probably could model children's clothes at his height, let's be honest. <laughs> of course, I bring up children because Disneyland, which once considered itself the happiest place on Earth, is continuing its ongoing quest to become the wokest place on Earth. Check it out. Disneyland just announced its first LGBT Pride Night in an effort to clap back across the country at Ron DeSantis in an ongoing culture war that started when he passed what the left claimed was a don't say gay bill. The only problem there is like every other Disney story, don't say gay was a pure fantasy. The Parental Rights and Education Act didn't even mention the word gay on any of its six original pages or in its expansion of the bill. It simply made it illegal to teach sexual activity or sexual identity to children between the ages of kindergarten and third grade. Because let's face it, growing up, we had a word for people who wanted to talk sex with little kids. They were called pedophiles. And DeSantis wisely pushed that crap out of the classrooms, not because he hated gay kids or trans kids, but because he hated the idea of sexualizing kids. And you know who else didn't ask to have adults sexualizing little kids or telling them they were trapped in the wrong body? Little kids. Bingo. Circle gets a square. No little kid was asking to go for a ride on Snow White and the Seven Genders. Nope. <laughs> no little boy wanted to be Peter Pan sexual. No, ma'am. And no little girl was asking to dress up as a princess named Cinder Fella. This only happens when woke parents force their politics on children the way Disney's woke board is forcing its politics on parents. You see, they're trying to clap back against their own straw man argument that DeSantis banned gay people. But hello, nobody who has ever been to Key West thinks Florida banned gay people. <laughs> Yo, South Beach is so gay, they have a Pride Month for straight people. <laughs> Disney claims they're carrying on with this event in the name of inclusion. But we know that's a scam, because if Disney really cared about including as many people as possible, they wouldn't charge 120 bucks to get in, you know? Thank you. Stop it. Last I checked, the prices were keeping out a lot more kids than the pronouns, Disney. Nope. This Pride Night is a way for Disney to score points with its woke culture warriors while doing what it does best, which is ripping off parents. Take it from a guy who knows. I took my son to Disney back in 2012 when I was a cab driver. Couldn't try the food because we couldn't get a co-signer, but the point is we had a good time. And when I got done turning tricks behind Space Mountain, my credit card was level. <laughs> Sorry, I've taken it home for a few people. Uh, <laughs> thought some of you fellas looked familiar. Uh, but the point is, Disney doesn't care about inclusion because they have the most exclusionary prices of any theme park on the planet. And don't let them pretend they care about gay people because Disney's streaming service does business in over a dozen countries that criminalize gay activity. For real. This is a company that calls DeSantis a homophobe while they squeeze every last dollar they can out of countries where gay behavior is punishable by fines, prison sentences, and hard labor. And not the type of hard labor Chadwick Moore offered me in the green room, either. <laughs> <laughs> Disney makes plenty of money in Saudi Arabia, which treats same-sex activity with chemical castrations, and in Yemen, where being gay is punishable by death. Not to mention that Disney Cruise Lines charge a starting price of 3800 bucks a person to sail to Antigua, Dominica, and St. Martin, where two guys kissing will not have a happy ending. Well, it might, but they'll get arrested if they get caught in the act. Uh, so, yo, Disney, <laughs> keep up with the group. Uh, so, yo, Disney, how about instead of hollering about don't say gay, you don't say anything? Because it may be a small world after all, but it's a huge double standard in your case, girlfriend. And I know DeSantis' Republican rivals are criticizing him for taking away Disney's special tax privileges and joking that he might build a state prison next to the park. And today, Florida updated that education bill on instruction about sexual orientation and gender identity. And it now includes grades 4 through 12, unless the curriculum is taught in a reproductive health lesson. 
Now, listen, we could argue for days over whether DeSantis is taking this too far, but let's not forget where it started. A governor stood up to the outrage mob and the biggest corporation in the state to say that he wasn't going to let anyone sexualize kindergarten kids. They tried spinning that into some sort of homophobia, even a bit of transphobia with zero supporting evidence. You know the old saying, when you have the facts, you pound the facts, but when you have nothing, you pound the table. Well, corporations like Disney have been pounding the table, but the joke of it all is nobody asked them to. Look, are kids going to grow up to be sexual beings someday? Sure they are, especially if R. Kelly can help it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how is he not a bail risk, by the way? He believes he can fly, you know what I mean? <laughs> But seriously, Disneyland is where you go to escape adulthood, even when you're adult. Which is why this parent thinks DeSantis is all the way right for pushing back on the left's obsession with sexualizing little kids. Just because families like Toy Story doesn't mean Disney should be trying to give our kids a Woody.